Okay, hi everyone, my name is Maxim, and today I'm going to be doing a short presentation on the subject of the RISC-V bit manipulation in instruction extension, uh, the state of it in the GCC backend, uh, and some of the code optimization opportunities that it has. So first of all, a short introduction. Uh, so uh, the spec is maintained by Clifford Wolf, and so we've got approximately 40 instructions spread across nine subsets. So each subset is uh, representative of a certain class of applications on which those uh, instructions are typically used. So for instance, you've got the base instruction, which is used, which is sort of your, uh, in a certain sense, canonical bit minute instructions that you would expect, like uh, leading zeros, trailing zeros, pop count, the SLO is shift uh, left, but you shift in uh, ones instead of zeros. Uh, you've got the max and the min, uh, those map quite nicely to the, you know, ubiquitous C macro. And you've got uh, permutation, single bit operations, uh, the ones at the bottom are a little bit more exotic. You don't see them so much generated by the compiler, as you shall see. And there's also the interesting case of the and not, or not, x nor not, and the pack and so forth. Those are actually present in two subsets, which required a bit of modification to uh, the GNU assembler to uh, be able to represent that constraint. So that's sort of what we're looking at here. And uh, the ones shaded in yellow are the, currently the ones that the compiler is capable of generating just implicitly. So they're the ones for which there exists a machine description. And uh, consequently, we've got a few new uh, built-in definitions. So uh, in GCC, when you uh, define the RTL templates, uh, GCC is aware of a certain set of you know, uh, predefined named templates. And uh, these ones now have optimized variants. So zero extent, uh, half integer two, pop count, now map to pop count. The leading and trailing zeros now uh, have a representative instruction. And the byte swap uses an uh, instruction called generalized reverse. I won't go into it here, but uh, basically it, it swaps around bits and bytes in the word depending on the, uh, from a function of the Im immediate that you pass in. So a few prelim preliminary benchmarks. Now, I suppose I'll get started with libgcc, which perhaps is not the best example, but uh, so without the BMI w w instructions, we've got to become significantly larger because as you, as you shall see, uh, without BMI, we have to emulate it. With a, uh, we have to produce a lot of code to shuffle them around the registers and so forth. Uh, now with the bit manip uh, instructions, uh, well, actually maps very nicely to the, some of the, so as I mentioned earlier, to the generalized reverse, implements this functionality directly. And a few others as well, the soft float emulation uh, functions uh, also benefit from the bit, man bit manipulation instructions. Uh, if you actually look into the sources, the, the, a lot of them use the count leading zeros primitive, which again, without BMI has to emulate and it's quite expensive, but now we can just uh, exhibit the instruction. So that's just a snippet from the soft load uh, support library. And uh, you know, if it's not defined, then it has to go down the expensive route, but otherwise it will, it will just pick it up. And I've also got a more real, I suppose you could say, I came up with a slightly you know, generic example, uh, just a piece of code that just takes an array, finds the max, and then depending on the max, it sets a flag. So this uh, is an example of the set bit instructions. This is without bit manip. And at the bottom, so because in RISC-V you can't load uh, the, 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 whole world, the, the whole word at the same time. You have to load the upper, then or it in, and so forth. Uh, but with bit manip, we can just do set bit. Uh, set bit immediate, at will set. The, the immediate is the index of the bit which we want to raise to one. So we, we, uh, you win you on code size there as well. Uh, I put it through mbench to figure out the size. So this is sort of, I hate to throw so much, so many numbers at pe people, but uh, the, the interesting ones here are the ZBB, ZBP, and the base. Uh, those are the ones for which uh, there's a lot of uh, mach machine description templates. And so we get about a 2.7% uh, code size decrease. Uh, not all of them actually benefit from it. Some of them actually get worse. Uh, I haven't investigated that yet, but uh, the, in particular, you'll notice the Pico JPEG in fact, I have the next slide. Uh, Pico J JPEG and the Nettle SHA-256 uh, have big wins. And the SHA-256 is thanks to the rotates that it uses. We can now, the compiler picks that up just implicitly. You don't have to emit intrinsics or anything. Uh, and uh, similar for the Pico JPEG was a bit more interesting. That uh, does a lot of sort of adding together numbers that are less than the size of the registers and we want to zero extend them. And so that uses the pack instruction, whereas before it had to emit a lot of code. So there's about a, a hundred bytes less there as well. So it's quite significant. So it's actually to use it, uh, you just pass in the architecture string. So normally you have RV32. You can do IMCB, 
and the B subset covers, there's a, a, a defaults to the seven general sort of uh, subsets, that's uh, ZBB, ZBC, and so forth. Uh, if you want to have, look, if you want to specifically use only ZBB and ZBC, then you pass in the corresponding string, and so forth. Uh, also, there are some strong con constraints on how you pass the string in. It has to be lowercase, uh, has to be alphabetical order with the second letter of the, the Z prefixed subsets, and so forth. Well, I'll go into it uh, later. Uh, some outstanding issues. So the, the architecture of string parsing is actually quite quite complicated now in the risk the ISA. There's a, you have to, has to be alphabetically ordered. There's also version numbers to worry about in the subset I, uh, in the, the ISAs. And we haven't got that yet. The, the, there's no infrastructure in the GNU assembler to handle, for example, if you have got two object files and you've got the same, uh, they use the same, they have the same architecture, architecture string but different version numbers for them, uh, which is de default to fail. So. Uh, it, not sure how, how to go forward with that. Right now, we just have a, we just shoehorn it to work. But you know, in the long term, we want probably to have something a bit more elegant. There are some outstanding issues with about 50 regression failures versus 21 in the vanilla compiler. Uh, that's down from about 260, with a, and just a few patches got it down. So uh, should get that sorted in a few weeks. And uh, also, not all the instructions that could have RTL descriptions have them. So, uh, for instance, the there's a few in there that are sort of obvious, but um, just haven't got around yet to writing them. And a writing machine description template is quite tricky sometimes. You write them one way, and it works for one set of benchmarks, but not the other. And then you write them another way, which is technically equivalent, but now it optimizes a different set, but it didn't, doesn't optimize the set that it used to. So you end up having to uh, you know, find the best one and just go with it. So I think that's all I wanted to say for this. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, any questions for Maxi? Okay, we'll now just switch over to the last talk. Um, Nidal?